Check your fly. Glass bead caddis pupa. Hey everybody, I don't know if you know this, but I have written a few articles for Fly Tire Magazine. Back in the winter of 2020, I wrote an article about tying with glass beads. And one of the flies I wrote about was the, my glass bead caddis pupa. Looks pretty good, huh? I use some crazy beads that I found at Hobby Lobby. They look like this. They are transparent green on the outside and then they have a yellow bead on the inside. They make a great looking caddis pupa. So let's tie some. Here I've got the hook and the vise. And as you can see, I've got a 7 64 inch black brass bead on the front and four of those glass beads on the back. I'm starting my ADOT olive uni thread about a bead's length behind the back bead. Helps to have your hook angled like this so you can get back at the back part. Now I've got a, a strand of olive antron yarn I'm going to tie in back there about a bead's length behind the back bead. Tie it in with a few wraps of thread, move my thread in front of that antron and I'm going to tie off my thread. I'm going to put a whip finish on back here and there we go. Trim off our thread and I'm going to invert that hook so that it's um, at a more normal position. Right like this. This is a size 14 hook, by the way. You can use any size 14 scud hook. You could use a 16 too. I would put one less glass bead on there. Now I'm starting my thread back up in front of the glass bead behind the brass bead. And start it there with a jam knot. Here's another angle from the other side. You can see it a little more clearly maybe. Start that thread right behind the, the brass bead. And then I'm going to pull the top half of that antron forward over the glass beads. Make a little halo effect there. Tie that in right behind the brass bead. A few nice tight wrap thread. Looks pretty good. You can kind of smoosh that down a little bit to make it uh, spread out a little more evenly and we'll trim off the excess. Put a couple more thread wraps in there. I'm going to separate about oh six to eight strands of that antron and just let it hang off the back. And the rest of that uh, strand of antron I'm going to pull underneath the beads and tie that in behind the brass bead. And here we go. It's much like a La Fontaine Emergent Sparkle Pupa in that regard. Trim that off. And uh, sometimes I trim the back antron short right now or wait until later. I trim that off right there. The hackle on this fly is a uh, dun, just a normal dun colored CDC. Tie that in right in front of the glass beads there. And trim that off, trim off the stem on the far side. And I'm gonna wrap this just like a soft hackle, so I'm gonna grab it with my hackle pliers here. Make sure you grab the stem so that the fibers don't pull off while you are wrapping it. And uh, CDC feathers are usually pretty short, so I can get maybe one and a half full wraps there in front of the glass beads got one and a half wrap there so tie that in with my thread and I can trim off that uh, the tip of that CDC feather get that out of there and look at how buggy that looks isn't that look delicious if you were a fish just kind of stroke those fibers back and now the dubbing on here is some SLF dubbing in the uh, natural fox squirrel color and I put on oh, inch inch and a half of dubbing on my thread there and just fill in the space behind the brass bead that's 
all there is to the slide. It's pretty easy. I'm gonna do my whip finish here, right behind the brass bead. And trim off the thread. And if the CDC is kind of long, I just kind of pinch those off so that they're about the length of the body or so. And our glass bead caddis pupa is finished. Here's another look from the opposite side. Looks, doesn't that look buggy and delicious? I just tied a bunch of these for Glenn's Fly Shop. They are headed there now. If you uh, need some, you can pick some up there or tie some of your own. It's a great fly. We'll see you next time. Check your fly.